story. It's been just over a year since we first reported on the understaffing at the Federal Correctional Facility in Pollock. Yeah, today dozens of those correctional officer positions remain open and some employees are calling for more action. Alina Noakes has more from Pollock. Here at FCC Pollock, dozens of employees drive down this road every single day. Many of them correctional officers. They drive through your towns, through your neighborhoods, some of them after having been ordered to pull a double shift multiple times in the same week. Those same employees are getting tired of it. At this point, there's no end in sight. And I know I probably said that last year, but there is no end in sight. In April of 2022, employees were hoping for federal help in the form of bonuses, one at 10% for retention and another at 25% for recruitment. They received both, but legislative coordinator Thomas Moore says several workers are still in the same boat. We've had people come and say, we'll just pay it back. We, we're tired of working the long hours. FCC Pollock is now at 83% staffing. According to the prison's union, the group of correctional officers at the prison averaged more than 400 overtime shifts per month in the last year. They're projected to hit $5.3 million in overtime just for correctional officers by October. When you see numbers like this, it really shows you how bad it is and how much people are working. They're, 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 they're struggling. Those shortages are impacting the way the whole prison operates, from vocational programs to inmate visitations and more consistent lockdowns. Everything is on its schedule. When you're short of staff, it just throws that schedule out the window on a day-to-day -day basis. So how do you provide for both the safety of staff and inmates under these conditions? Employees are looking to Congress for those answers, hoping for more action than talk on the floor. One congressman from Texas hopes he can help. Congressman Randy Weber represents the 14th District of Texas, right along the Gulf Coast, home to several federal prison facilities also experiencing shortages. The reality is that employees working in facilities in larger cities like Houston get paid more than in facilities like those in Beaumont, Texas, or Pollock, Louisiana. Weber doesn't think that's fair. They're subject to the same inflation that's been going on, uh, the gasoline prices that's been going on. And so to, for, for us, it seems substandard that they would be subjected to a lower rate of pay. That's why he's introduced the Pay Our Correctional Officers Fairly Act. The bill would bump up the pay in facilities within 200 miles of bigger cities, aiming to make the pay more competitive and reduce the problems worsened by the shortages. We're losing those employees to other agencies that pay more irrespective of where their uh, employees will live. Many surrounding places to get a job don't require employees to put themselves in as much danger as working in a correctional post. You can go to Target or go to Wendy's and make 20 something dollars an hour and not worry about getting stabbed. There's hope closing that pay gap will help keep people working at the prison. And the American people have been given a whole lot in terms of safety on top of these kinds of people who lay their lives on the line every day and we ought to be able to remunerate, remunerate them uh, properly. A representative from FCC Pollock says the agency is currently looking at ways to modernize their hiring process and they're using an outside consultant to look at the overtime reporting and employee retainment and recruitment. For News Channel 5, I'm Alina Noakes. And we've made multiple attempts to allow Congresswoman Julia Letlow to comment on this issue since FCC Pollock is in her district, but her office has yet to do so.